Hello community! Today a new instruction fine-tuning method, University of Maryland, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and New York University. And if you fine-tune your Llama 27B model using the Alpaca dataset on a specific data a benchmark dataset, you achieve about 30% performance. But if you use this new fine-tuning method, this performance rises to 65% using here noisy embeddings. So you might ask, hey, what are noisy embedding? Now, noisy embeddings are a stochastic noise that you add to the model's embedding space during the fine tuning. So this noise is added to the input embeddings before they are fed into the models, the LLM's transformer layers. And this noise can be generated from various distributions, from uniform or Gaussian distribution, and you have hyperparameters to optimize this. Very easy equation. The embeddings here of this new fine tuning methodology is the embedding of the original plus here an epsilon. This is here a noise term that you simply add to this. Now, if you know fine tuning, you know that we have here the classical dropout functionality, but instead here with dropout of searing out certain neurons, now we add some noise to the embedding space, thereby operating in a different parameter space. So I will show you this in detail in a second. Great. So we have here Jones Belcada. He says, hey, new feature alert on Hugging Face. We have now included in Hugging Face NAFT. Isn't this beautiful? And he shows us if we train here Mistral 7B on a Guanaco dataset with the classical supervised fine tuning, we have here the performance in orange. And if we go here with Guanaco NEFT fine tuning methodology, we have here this performance. And this increase here is really significant. And we can do this with one line of code. Thanks. Here, our visit from Hugging Face, who implemented this for us. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about regularization in our large language model. So, the success here of NAFT calls for a re evaluation of the regularization techniques that we normally use in our LLMs. So, we see here is a lot of benefit to gain if we optimize our regulation. And we are talking here about a stochastic regulation. So this means the introduction of noise in the embedding space can be used in a form of stochastic regularization akin to a dropout, but operating in a different parameter space. And this has implications for the optimization landscape, potentially smoothing, and I will talk about this, and aiding in generalization. You know, overfitting, I will talk about this and I will show you the difference between overfitting and this specific stochastic regularization here in a different parameter space. So the concept of stochastic regularization technique used to improve the generalization performance of machine learning models. So what we want, we want with this stochastic regularization that we introduce some noise during the draining phase to prevent the model from fitting too closely to the training data. Because what we want, we want to improve the ability of the model to generalize to unseen real-time data. This is what we are looking for. We don't want yet a perfect fit for the training data and that the model is unable to perform an unseen data, but we want exactly the opposite. We want not the perfect fit for the training data, but the generalization to unseen data. This LLM is able to do its job on data that, has it, that it has not been trained on. You know dropout, a well-known form of stochastic regularization, but it operates in a different space where some neurons in our neural network are randomly dropped out or let's call it deactivated during the training. This is what dropout means. You know this. Now, as I told you, we operate in two different spaces. Please keep this really clear. So concept of neural networks, dropout operate in the neuron space, where each training iteration random neurons are turned off. So creating a send out version of our network, and this prevents any single neuron from becoming overly specialized, thereby aiding generalization. Now, with NAFT, we have here some 
introduction of additional noise into the embedding space, which is the vector space where the words or the tokens are mapped. And this is a different parameter space compared to the neuron space where the dropout operates. So careful, different spaces. Yeah, there is some smoothing happening. And when I say smoothing, what I mean is the noise can help now our LLM model to escape here the poor local minima. If you know about backpropagation, you understand exactly what this sentence means. And of course, as I told you, generalize better to unseen data. This is what this helps us. Now, to show you this, not in one thousand dimension, but in two dimension, I have a simple example. We use some polynomial curve fitting. So at first, we have data points and we go without a regularization. What happens? Your data points and you try to fit a high degree polynomial through all of the points. And the polynomial will pass exactly through its point, but it will oscillate wildly between this point. This is what we call here in machine learning overfitting. Now, if we apply now the classical dropout regularization to this network, so instead of using all the terms in the polynomial during each iteration of our process, we randomly ignore some terms, akin to turning off some neurons, and the resulting curve will be less likely to oscillate wildly and it will generalize better to new data points. And of course, here we are. If we now use NEFT here, also a stochastic regularization in a different space, you could add some noise. So here we eliminate some, temporarily eliminate some neurons. Here we add some random noise to the y values of our data points in our two-dimensional plane before fitting the polynomial now to each data point in the iteration. And we add some noise in the embedding space and this polynomial will now try to fit this noisy data. And as a result, it will not perfectly fit to the original training the data points, thereby improving the generalization to unseen data. And this is the beauty here of NAFT. So again, in both regularization scenarios, you prevent the model from overfitting to the training data. But the way this is achieved is different in both mechanisms. Please keep this in mind. The dropout operates by simplifying the model using fewer terms here in the polynomial, crossing out some neurons in our neural network, whereby NAFT operates by making the problem itself more complex, adding here stochastic noise to the data points. But both models aim to improve, have here the same goal, to improve the model's ability to generalize to new unseen data. And for Ben, I have written a short Python code for you to show you here what does it mean overfitting? What does it mean regularization? What does NAFT do? So see, I just took 10 arbitrary data points. Then for overfitting, I have a ninth degree polynomial. For the dropout regularization, I feed a third degree polynomial. And then I show you NAFT regularization with noise. So let's have a look at this. The very first step is, of course, here our data points. Look, these are just some arbitrary data points. And the task is now to fit here a polynomial to all the different data points. Now, the first thing what we do is, of course, that we say, OK, we try here with a very high degree polynomial to have here really here close that we get almost all the points. And you see here, this is the result. Let's make it a little bit smaller so we can have it here. You see here, yes, this works, but we have high oscillation. So this is really some crazy curve. Now, second is, if we want to prevent overfitting, we have some dropout. You remember dropout is that some neurons, we deactivate the neurons. Let's have a look now. And here in orange now, we have here a fitted polynomial. You see here the polynomial tries to come close to each and every point. And this is here in orange now, our, if you want, regularization by dropout. But of course, we are interested here 
in the NEFT tuning like regularization. So we add some noise to the Y parameter and then we try to approximate this. And look here in green, we have it now. This is our curve, goes through, yes, beautiful, goes through, yes, goes through, goes through, almost goes through, great. Yes, really close, yes, goes through, comes down and then up and then an oscillation goes through. So you see, this is some beautiful fitting that is not an overfitting like here simulated in this oversimplification by a ninth degree polynomial. But here our NAFT with some noise added, we have here a very beautiful and successful approximation with here a seven degree polynomial. So you see NAFT is really, really nice. It does not do the overfitting. And in plus it is powerful if you present some unseen data in the prediction of the result. I hope Ben this helped you a little bit to understand here overfitting, the dropout, and NAFT like regularization effort. So, how do we code this? We want to have this implemented in our code. And you know what? It is so simple and it's so beautiful. It is one line of code. Let me show you how you code it. So let's go to Hugging Face, our transformer reinforcement learning. Let's go to the API and let's go supervised fine tuning. You find it here. So with supervised fine tuning, you notice I have shown you in my videos and we directly go here to enhance the model performance using Neftune. So Neftune technique to boost the performance of a chat model showed you the paper you notice diagram where they show you here the improvement here for if you have the alpaca training data set or other data sets you have an improvement in red and how to use this now our wizards in hugging face made it so easy because to use this now in your supervised fine tuning trainer you simply have to insert one line look this is the line that you insert in your trainer. You have your model, you have your data set, you have your maximum sequence length, and then you input here simply Neftune noise alpha and a specific hyperparameter. This is it. Everything has been done for you. This is the whole, if you want, uh, code, the whole script that you need to use. You have your training data set. And you have here one line to activate your NEFT tune methodology. And this gives you, depending on the data set, depending on your specific model, between 15 and 50 percentage improvements. Now, really interesting, look what Hugging Face wrote. We have tested NEFT tune by training here our Mistral 7B, the same that I showed you in my last video on an open assistant data set and validated that using Neftune led to a performance boost of 25% on this multidimensional benchmark. 25% is huge. An improvement of 25% just adding one line of code to your existing code and just load here the latest uh, module, of course, of here Hugging Face Trainer so that you have here this functionality activated. This is really, really something you should try out. But please, in my testing, I found it is sensitive to the data set that you use. So whatever data set you are using, it will be different. Now, the Open Assistant data set from Team Datmers, you know, this is easy. Have a look at this data set. Here you have the human. Can you write a short introduction about the relevance of the term monopsony in economics? Please use examples related to potential monopsonies in the labor market. And then whatever AI assistant, AI assistant comes back and says, hey, monopsony refers to, so this is your training data set here, the open assistant Guanaco training data set. So whatever training data set you use, your performance will vary but I have seen between 15 and 50% improvement by just adding one line of code. So, wow, great, our wizard at Hugging Face, congratulations. This is really interesting. What else is there to say? Yeah, interestingly, 
In my last video, I also showed you here the dataset of UltraJet. And Hugging Face noted that I have noted that the amount of performance gain in is dataset dependent, as I just told you. And in particular, if we apply Navtune on this purely synthetic dataset like UltraJet, it produces smaller productivity or performance gains. So in summary, this study is really impressive, but please note that under conclusion and limitations, even two universities and one national laboratory of the US finally say, hey, due to limited compute resources, we were not able to validate the success of NEFT on larger 70 billion LLMs across multiple data sets. So, this is something that is really amazing that only Google and Microsoft are able to have this compute resources and even three institutions here, universities, national laboratories, have to say in an official study, due to limited compute resources, we were not able to validate this on huger, larger, bigger models. And this is something that we have to overcome here in the scientific community. And interesting, the very last sentence, they say, hey, finally, despite our empirical studies and they show their success, we do not have a conclusive understanding of why NAFT works. So given here the empirical performance, they still don't know why it works. And you see the difference here is really striking just for adding one line of code to your code gives you an improvement. Look at STEM here. The performance jump is significant also in humanities and in writing. So why not you give it a try? Would be great to hear from your experience. Hope to see you in my next video.